hey, how's it? Uh, please go check out the previous part to gauge your bearings, okay? Uh, in the previous part, I was ta talking about how this dude tried to drive me to Alex. So two men tried to have sex with me when I was not interested. And as if though turning his friend down and even booking into a hotel was not a, a strong enough hint for this guy to understand that I'm not going to sleep with him. I'm not going to go with him. Go Alexi. Like literally, I would have been better off going to a hotel with his perverted friend than go Alexi, go Rumung, Mukukung or whatever. Let this random food. And yet he thought he could just enjoy on some, mm, I got like a woman here and I want to get laid. Yo, guys, I told him where to get off, told him I was going to cause a scene on the highway. And then he agreed to drop me off in Santon nearby, like a mall. And I was just chilling there at the library, the library side of Santon Mall. He dropped me off at the library and I, this phone is getting hot. And when it's super hot, I lose my content. So the next part I will likely record on my iPhone. If at all, it doesn't cut me. So this dude did this. Okay. Where's my iPhone? Anyway. Oh, goodness gracious. Anyway, whatever. Right. This dude drops me off. Remember I told you in the previous part, hold that thought that there was this dude that was a rich kid. He was like a year older than me or whatever. Um, he was, I was not interested in him. But and he started out pursuing me, but then after I rejected him enough times, we became friends. And he bought me two tracker caps. He was like a sweet dude whose dad was rich, lived in the hood. Um, and he had I didn't tell you guys that he had a driver anyway. I know that guy had a driver. Uh, I also told um, in the previous part, I had mentioned that I had a friend from varsity. She stayed in not far, she well, she stayed in, in Calvin, right? Which is in Santon. It is a little bit. It it is in the northern suburbs of Johannesburg. It's a little bit of a distance tish from where it is that we were at. It's not exactly in a city, Santon, but it is in the north. Enough for her, for me to be able to call her and for her to pick me up. But I didn't have any air time. And, you know, the, it, I, all I had was the please call me. And at the time, Vodacom, it was, I, I was on Vodacom. And it was at the time, you could only, you only got five please call me's on your cell phone. After five, uh, after you send five please call me's, you're not going to be able to use them again for another 24 hours. You're not going to get another five please call me. So I had to be very careful with my please call me's. I mentioned that my mom was not home. I had a friend that had a car from Varsity. And there was this dude, Wako Santon, as well, right? I first tried with, not my mom, but I tried with this friend. I sent her my first please call and I waited for her to call me back. She didn't. So I don't know, either she was partying or she was not looking at her phone or whatever. And so I just like was like, mm -mm, I can't waste that. My please call me is on this friend of mine that might just call me tomorrow morning on some girl. Sorry, I saw your please call me uh, only like now. What's up? <laughs> so I sent the rest of the other four PCMs, please call me. I sent the other four to this dude. I remember that, oh, there's this guy that has a crush on me and we're friends now. You know, we have like a friendly relationship. I sent him the first please call me second. By the time I was about to send him the third please call, I was going to use the remaining four on him. The call came through. He called me. And he's like, hi, Karabs, how are you doing? Yo, I just like burst out into tears on some. <laughs> There's these two men. They basically just almost try to rape me. I don't know what's going on. I'm screaming. <laughs> anyway, I was crying. And I was saying, he was like, well, relax, breathe. Where are you? I was like, I'm at the library. It's Santa. And I'm just here at the library. It's so quiet. There's no one. I'm scared. He's like, okay, no, I'm coming. Yes. And the dude was there within 15 minutes. He was, like I told you, the kid of a minister or something. You know, the Lord has always gone before. The Lord has always known what dangers I would face in my life. You guys, he's always covered and protected me. If I had not met that guy, and if he had not been such a neutral, sweet kid that also just so happened to have a whole bunch of money, a whole bunch of money because he was the kid of a minister or whatever, I would not have gotten out of that situation safely. I would have been in trouble. I would have likely had to sleep all night long, go and find some bench and first thing in the morning when the sun rises, take a taxi home because that's all I could afford. I didn't have enough money to afford a magsy taxi. I would have been in trouble. But God, even before I knew him and because he, again, foresaw that in order, she wants a job because she's struggling and her mom is kind of neglectful. She's going to get a job that she's going to struggle to get back home from. And then she's going to think that she can use her pretty face to make men take her home. And one day there's going to be two buffoons that are going to try and exploit her sexually. And she's going to find herself stranded in the middle of a, mo of a mall at night. And she would be in trouble. So he brought this very playful Jocko's kid that just so happened to have a whole bunch of money and a very lani bougie lifestyle. Um, 
and this kid would like her but not be forceful or pushy or anything of that nature and they would become friends and this kid is going to be who gets her out of this situation because everybody else is just not going to come to the party they're going to expect something out of it so that's what god did in eternity past to protect me against that situation but then he also knew that he would use the story one day to tell a prophecy of what's currently going on in the country how bad the situation is and what under heaven and will ultimately be South Africa's demise. The men on the ground and the women and what in the world under heaven is its state of being handed over to a reprobate nature, what it will mean for the nation in totality at large and what God is going to do to rescue basically his Christians out from the darkness. He's going to take his kids out from that insane environment and leave the land reprobate in its decision that it has made against my my children god used that scenario in a dream in the way that i'm in a way that i'm going to explain it's in Khale. Uh, but first let me finish the story this dude rocked up but within 15 minutes he was there because he was this rich lonely kid his dad um uh had they had a driver go jagating some dude that was just always there parked and he was like you know alfred we'll call him alfred because he was like bruce Wayne, I don't know. He was like, Alfred, let's give the guy the name Alfred. Alfred, please take me to Santana. Um, there's somebody there that's having a little bit of a hard time. Uh, uh, Santin, the library, he was there with his Alfred driver and drove me home. You know, dropped me off and, like, you know, comforted me. I'm sorry for about what happened. Those guys are total jerks. Like, they total jerks. I'm so sorry, Karabo. Um, and I, I went inside the house. And I was I was comfortable. I was protected. I was, however, quite traumatized. Like I was quite traumatized with what had happened. I did not expect that men would do that to me because I'd never experienced anything that ridiculous at the hands of men before. Um, and for the first time in my life, I experienced it. So th that dude was was really very beneficial to me. He well, he stayed my friend for a, some time still after that. But we sort of kind of you know broke. What's the word? Um, drifted apart like life happened he became his own person in that regard I became my own person nothing it wasn't a uh, we a horrible nah you you are you you suck you're not in my league we just drifted apart like the way that you do with some friends nothing intense but that's what happened that night I got home because of somewhat of a good Samaritan dude that was not the total jerk that those two married men were even though he had a crush on me he did not try and exploit the situation for his own benefit okay cool beans and bananas now that i've explained that story to you i'm going to tell you guys the dream but i'm gonna do that from my iphone because i'm very disquieted about how hot that um this android device is now okay next part